let us pray father in heaven we bless your name this morning we thank you for who you are what you have done as we open the pages of your word we ask for clarity please speak to us distinctly may we hear no man's voice but the voice of jesus not i but christ be honored love and exalted not i but christ be seen be known and be heard not i but christ in every look and action not i but christ in every thought and word in jesus name amen please you may be seated it's a privilege to have the opportunity to join you here again at nairobi central and i am telling pastor peter now that i want to apply through ruto to have a citizenship here in kenya <laughs> so that i will also transfer my membership to nairobi central if you are in support with me say an amen god is good and all the time I bring greetings from two places number one I bring greetings from my wife Henry Samuel Amensa and Susan and my household they extend their regard greetings number two is from our entity at CAM the Center for Outreach Mentorship and Empowerment uh, warmly extends their um, greetings to you here as well I am reliably informed by the leadership of the church that we are in for an evangelistic effort so i titled this morning's service subject hooked on hope subheading a lifeline to the lost hooked on hope subheading a lifeline to the lost i'm only going to make two statements largely or three at most in case you miss out on what i am attempting to say by the grace of god number one the reason the church exists and the reason for which you join this church it's not for good music, it's for missions. I expect to say here an amen. Number two, God's best way to win sinners is through preaching. And I'm coming to demonstrate it through the word. Number three, point number three, we cannot do this work without the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. And we can gain that through prayer. These are the three reasons. And when we do this, then we send what I call a lifeline to the lost. So this is basically the message. But as I always do, it was Jesus himself who says, if you continue in my words, then you are my disciples indeed, and you shall know the truth, and the truth shall set you free. If the Son sets you free, you will be free indeed. Nairobi Central say a kenyan flavored amen to god's glory all right i want to make to you four promises promise number one is the bible is going to be the bedrock of our study this morning the reason is the bible means what it says and says just what it means promise number two you are going to be enlightened irrespective of who you are promise number three you are going to be challenged to make the most important decision of your life and promise number four your life and mine will never be the same. Our subject for the hour, hooked on hope, subheading, a lifeline to the lost. I want to make three strong statements. There is an alarming statistics. Long before COVID, the Christian faith drops are now around 1,000, 1.2 million. A year those who quit Christianity every year 1.8 million and by extension 7,600 church attendees every day in other words Christianity is suffering from an existential threat when granted the pattern continues over a period of time, there are going to be more Muslims in the world than Christians. 
Yesterday, I was analyzing the data. Across Africa, we have 12.3 million university students in the universities. SDA, less than 60,000. Those who believe in agnostic, those who believe in atheism, those who believe in African traditional religion, they are more in the universities even than our children in the universities. There is an existential threat for the Christian church. The reason is the church has now evolved into a pattern of celebrity status and at best, a social function where we listen to great music, we feel good, we socialize, and we go, and it continues over the period. I am told the church here is given a, a quarter of 2,000 or 1,000 something a year. We have chucked 400. This morning, I just want you to follow me as I also follow scripture for us to glean some three basic lessons. I'm talking about hooked on hope, a lifeline to the lost. Islam, you know, when you take the Bible of script, you read the seven churches of Revelation chapter 2, chapter 3, they are now Islam-dominated areas. The church of Pergamos, the church of Sardis, the church of Laodicea, listen, those centers today are the headquarters of Islam. I am making the point that church exists for a reason. I say it this way. The church as the body of Christ has the same purpose as Christ. Follow me. In other words, the concern of Christ must be the concern of his church. Let me say it differently. The church as the body of Christ exists or has the same purpose as Christ. So the concern of Christ must be the concern of his church. True or false? That's a weak one. You just had demonstration. You had fire. So I'm here to pick some of your fire. True or false? Great. Take your Bible. Luke 19 verse 10. For the Son of Man is come to seek and to save that which was lost. Watch. Sinners are not just saved. They must be sought for. The Son of Man did not come just to save the sinner. The Son of Man came with the agenda. Number one, seek the sinner. Save the sinner. The reason is the sinner is lost. If this is the concern, the purpose of Christ, it must be the purpose of the church. I repeat, the church as the body of Christ, has the same purpose as Christ. The concern of Christ must be the concern of his church. John 3, verse 17, write it down. John 3, verse 17, For God sent not his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. How are sinners saved? Through Christ. Ladies and gentlemen, the church as the body of Christ has the same purpose as Christ. The concern of Christ must be the concern of Nairobi Central. Mark 10, verse 45. For the Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many. So Christ came to lay down his life so that many lost including those of us here, might be saved. In other words, the church must be willing to lay down every other priority in pursuit of the salvation of the lost. Do you agree with scripture? Yes or no? No, no, I didn't hear you. Yes or no? Yes. I repeat, the church as the body of Christ has the same purpose as Christ. The concern of Christ must be the concern of his church. So the church must be willing to die to save souls. Any church without this priority is engaged in what I call misplaced priority or social contract or gathering. 
In case you think I am a heretic, take your, Bible, take your book to Desire of Ages, page 822. Read it with me. Those joining on Facebook and YouTube, you are part of the studies today. So I will be engaging you as well. Desire of Ages, page 822. Can we read it together? Kenyans, I know you go to school a lot. So let's go. The Savior's commission to the disciples included all believers in Christ to the end of time. Are we part of that commission? Yes or no? Yes. Act of Apostles, page 9. Ellen White says, The church is God's appointed agency for the salvation of man. It was organized for service, and its mission is to carry the gospel to the world. So every day, when there is a gathering at Nairobi Central, we are not here for you to feel good. We are not here for you to feel fine. We are not here for you to feel sweet. We are not here for you to feel freaky. The reason we gather here, one reason the church is organized, Nairobi Central, Nairobi East, all the unions, all the missions, all the conferences, all the districts, it's not for political expediency. Jesus wants to wrap up the work in the world. Jesus wants to win the soul. So the spirit of prophecy says, the reason we exist is the reason for the next two weeks why I am in the city. Period. To win the loss. If you agree with me, raise your two hands. Two hands. Now put them together, call clapping. Pull them together. Let me, let, me, let, let me be sure we are together. If you are less than 35, if you are 35, you, if you are less than 40, let me see your hand. Less than 40. Less than 40. Less than 40. Please raise your two hands. Please, you do the clapping, let me sense it. You are the demonstrators. Because you have energy. The whole church clap cannot be compared to yours. The church exists for mission. I, I, I'm building a preliminary point. Christian service. This book, if you've not read it, read the whole book. I read it 22 years ago. It changed my life. Every soul whom Christ has rescued is called to work in his name for the saving of the lost. Read it again. How many souls? Talk to me. How many souls? Every soul. Whom Christ has what? Rescued is called to work in his name for the saving of the lost. Question, in essence, why did Jesus save you? To save others, to rescue the lost, to save the lost. So Jesus did not call you to come and show us your heels. Jesus did not call you to show us your hair. Jesus did not call you to speak good grammar during Sabbath school. Jesus did not call you to show us your suit. Jesus did not call you to let us see your children. They are at Harvard. They are at ICT. They are at M MIT. No, the Ivy List call. Jesus called you only for one reason. So that you too will save somebody. Guys, hear me. It takes one latter day saying when i was in the plane we were about 365 when i was coming from ghana almost to tear a latter day saints i engaged them throughout the journey i engaged them throughout the journey and the young people one latter day saint young man is to bring 18 souls one year it takes 19 to 20 adventists to win one soul in a year Latter-day Saint, one youth, 18 souls, SDA, 19, 19 to 20 people, they win one soul. And do you know what we do? We gather at the general conference. We gather at the division. We gather at the union constituency meeting. We gather at the conferences. And we try to put a narrative as if we are working. I'm yet to announce to Nairobi Central, we have not done well so far. Pastor Peter, I'm sorry, the church has not done well so far. Listen, look at this army. Look at this army. The reason is we know this, but we don't fully believe it. I 
Christian service page, page number 10. Please read it with me like East Africans in suit and tie in your cold. Let us go. It says what? To everyone, work has been allotted. And no one can be a substitute for another. Let's read it again. To everyone, work has been allotted. And no one can be a substitute to another. Hear me. Can I do your work? Yes or no? Can I do your work? Yes or no? Can you do my work? Yes or no? You are answerable to God. If your portion is left undone, you are answerable to the one who called you. If your work is left undone, I am committed. I am dedicated. Listen, I just finished a program in Zambia. I am coming here. I will go back home for four days. I return back to Zambia. I return to Kenya for the... Listen, I want to do my part. Why? God has given me my part. God has given me my portion. I cannot leave it for another. I can't disappoint Jesus. I can't disappoint Jesus. I cannot disappoint him in his wisdom. He has given me ability. He has given me capabilities. He has given me energy. He has given me brains. He has given me resources. God's will. You were born 1984, May 7th. In your generation, I have a work to do. I have a business to fulfill. And in my wisdom, I entrust it to you. Jesus is saying, don't disappoint me. Don't disappoint me. Don't disappoint me. I cannot disappoint my Lord. I cannot disappoint my Lord. I hope somebody will say an amen. Hear me. Look at your church and mine. Christian service page nine. Mm. Mm. Every true disciple is born into the kingdom of God. Us. I didn't hear it. Us. In other words, every untrue disciple is born into the kingdom as a non-missionary. The level, if your appetite for the loss is at its minimum threshold, you are a false disciple. You care less who is lost. You care less. Hear me, there are people in Kenya, they die every day. They go to the grave. They have no salvation. And guess what? We don't care. It's common to us. It's like you are before an ocean and people are drowning. People are drowning. You have ability. You have capability. You have the potential to redeem them, to save them, to aid them, to help them. And you care less. He who drinks of the living water becomes a fountain of water. The receiver becomes. The mission for which your church exists and mine is to make disciples of Jesus who live as his loving witness and proclaim to all people the everlasting gospel of the three angels' messages in preparation for his soon return. And we do this through the method guided by the Bible and the Holy Spirit. Seventh-day Adventists pursue this mission through Christ-like living, communicating, discipling, teaching, healing, and serving. For musicians, I, I, I watched your service. Last week, Pastor Kwe preached here. Brilliant man. And I wish you invited him much more to this church. At the gates of, is it it's Sodom? At Sodom's gate or something. Or was it not last week? When we sing, we don't sing to entertain. We sing to save souls. When we teach and preach, we don't teach to preach so that we are the center of attraction. It must be about souls. Any motivation, when the treasury are doing their work, is for one thing, save the laws, 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 save the laws. 
period. Nothing else, nothing more. Anything aside these, we are engaged in social gathering. Hooked on hope. A lifeline to the lost. Let me get to my second main point. The preaching and teaching of the gospel is God's foremost medium of sending a lifeline to the lost. Let me say it again. The preaching and teaching of the gospel is God's foremost medium of sending a lifeline to the lost. Do I have the evidences? Why not? Let us go. Matthew 9 verse 35. Then Jesus went about all the cities and villages, teaching in their synagogues, preaching the gospel of the kingdom, and healing every sickness and every disease among the people. What was Jesus doing? He was teaching. He was preaching. These were the two foremost. Healing is secondary as a backup. But God's foremost medium to save lost soul is the preaching and the teaching of the gospel. Luke chapter 8, verse 1. Now it came to pass, when Jesus finished commanding his 12 disciples, he departed from there to do what? Read with me. What did he do? To teach and then to what? Preach. Where? In their cities. I repeat, the preaching and the teaching of the gospel is God's foremost medium of sending a lifeline to the lost. And this is what your church wants to do this way. You want to deploy the foremost medium of redeeming the lost through the teaching and through the word preaching of the gospel. As if it was only Jesus who followed this medium. Acts 17, 16 to 17. Now while Paul waited for them at Athens, his spirit was provoked within him when he saw that the city was given over to idols. Therefore, he reasoned in the synagogue with the Jews and with the Gentiles, worshippers, and in the marketplace daily, Paul was angry. Why is Nairobi given to godliness, given to atheists, given to agnostic, given to Muslims, given to people proclaiming a certain gospel, but not the everlasting gospel? He was raised with revulsion. But we are in the city of Nairobi. It's normal. We are comfortable. Our classmates are getting lost. We are okay. Our workmates are getting lost. We are okay. And I asked this morning, Nairobi Central, could it be we ourselves are unsaved? Could it be? When they say someone is lost, it means for all eternity, the person's life on earth was not just useless. The person will be destroyed forever. The preaching and the teaching of the gospel is God's foremost medium of sending a lifeline to the lost. Acts 15, verse 35. Acts 15, 35. Acts 15, 35. Can we read it together? Let's read it as a church. Let's go. Paul and Barnabas also remained in Antioch. What were they doing? Teaching and war, preaching the word of the Lord with many others also. What is God's foremost medium of saving the lost? It is through the teaching and then the preaching of the gospel. Acts 15 verse 35. Uh, Acts 8 verse 40 for the sake of time. But Philip was found at Azotus. And passing through, he preached in all the cities till he came to Caesarea. What is God's foremost medium of saving the laws? The preaching and the teaching of the gospel. Let me say it this way. In Colossians, I like the way the writer put it. If indeed you continue in the faith, Paul writes, grounded and steadfast and are not moved away from the hope of the gospel which you heard which was preached to every creature under heaven of which i paul became a minister paul was telling the church at Colossae, we preached the gospel we taught the gospel and the whole world 
listen to it. And the question I want to ask Nairobi Central this morning is this. Indeed, are people aware of the preaching and the hearing? I wanted to sing a song for three minutes. We want to sing all the stanzas. I was born in this church. I started doing evangelism. I was 15. I'm 40 years now. This was the song we used to sing in my village church. Lift up the trumpet and loud let it ring. Jesus is coming again. Cheer up, ye pilgrims. Be joyful and sing. Jesus is coming. I was on the seat from age four. I was hearing, lift up the trumpet. I thought the church meant it. And I grew up and I did not know. It was not our priority. Nairobi Central, join me, those of you online, wherever you find yourself, we want to pause in between this and lift up a song, stir our heart. We are here because Jesus wants to save the world. We are here because Jesus wants to redeem the world. And he wants to partner with sinners like us in this work of redemption. How many persons can sing this song? Let me see your hand. I know how to sing it. Please, I want you to sing it and let the building come down. Lift up the trumpet. Jesus is coming again. Let's sing. Lift up the trumpet and look, let it Come on, my Ruby Central, lift up your voice. Jesus is coming again. Cheer up, he pilgrims. Be joyful and sing. joining online if you believe Jesus is coming again just tie Jesus is coming again both on YouTube both on Facebook Jesus is coming again take your Bible now why must we preach the gospel with a sense of agency somebody asked me why is fire in your belly why are you so consumed Jesus is coming again Matthew 24 14 and this gospel of the kingdom 
shall be preached in all the world for a witness. Then shall the end come. Preaching of the gospel brings the world to an end. The world will not come to an end through music. The world will not come to an end through, through committee meetings. The world will not come to an end to mere church activity. The Bible says, and this gospel, this everlasting gospel, it will be proclaimed, preached. Why must we preach? It must be preached in all the world. Why? For a witness. And what will happen? Jesus will zoom into space, into this world. Why is this church upstairs? When Peter called me with the team, Peter said, my guy, you need to be here. We need to do this project. Why? Because preaching this gospel brings the world to an end. The world of suffering, the world of sorrow, the world of sin, and the world of suffering. It's the preaching of the gospel that brings it to an end. Second Peter chapter 3, verse 12, looking for and hastening unto the coming of the day of God, wherein the heavens being on fire shall be dissolved, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. The preaching of the gospel has capacity to hasten the coming. Why has Jesus not come till now? The gospel is not preached effectively. The gospel is not taught effectively. When it is time for events like this to zoom in one community, you see passive church members giving reasons and the other why they cannot be part. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, the reason why this week we don't need to preach to empty seats. We don't need to preach to church members. We need to preach to the lost who must hear, who must hear, who must hear, who need to accept Jesus. Is because it is through the preaching of the gospel will we hasten the coming of Jesus. Why must we preach the gospel with urgency? Romans 10 verse 14 Everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. How then can they call on the one they have not believed in? And how can they believe in the one of whom they have not heard? And how can they hear without someone preaching to them, preaching of the gospel, bring redemption to the world? There are some individuals who were not believing. I was in the University of Baraton and I proclaimed this everlasting gospel university student. They show up every morning and evening. On Thursday, I spent one hour and I told them why I believe in the seven day Adventist message and why I keep the Sabbath, why I believe in the state of the dead, why I believe in the signs of coming, why I believe in the second coming, why I believe in the sanctuary, why I believe, why I believe almost 300 of them, 200 and something plus, show up and I sent them back. I made a call again, they show up. I said, we don't want wet devils. You get baptized, you go back to your former doctrine, you believe in this message. Over 280 something were immersed and baptized one day of proclaiming this everlasting gospel. The preaching of the gospel brings redemption to the world. Paul says, I am not ashamed. Some of us, we are ashamed of the Adventist message. I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. Why? It is the dunamis, it is the power of God that brings salvation to everyone who believes. You want to see the power of God. You want to see signs and wonders. You want to see miracles splitting people's lives, bringing them, wrapping them, and summoning them before God. You see it in the proclamation and the preaching of the gospel. Reason number three, why must we preach the gospel with fire and urgency? 2 Timothy 2, 2 Timothy 4, verse 2 to verse 3. Hear the, the word of scripture. It says, it says, preach the word. Be instant in season. Out of season. Reprove rebuke, exalt with all long suffering. And it says, for the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but after their own lust shall they keep for themselves teachers having itching ears. Why must we preach the gospel 
Preaching is mandatory because there is a limited time in hearing the pure truth. A day is coming. It's almost here. People are no more excited about the gospel. People are not excited. The world is distracted in every dimension. We focus on the lesser things. The minors become the major. And the major become the minor. What will arrest the attention of the world is the preaching of the gospel. We have no time. Hear me. I'm not saying a feeble. The Bible says a time will come. They will not endure some doctrine. So when must we preach the gospel? We preach it when it is convenient. We preach it when it is not convenient. We preach it in the cold season. We preach it in the dry season. We preach it in the winter. We preach it in the summer. What must we do? Reprove the world. Rebuke the world. Exalt the world. And do it with all long suffering. Don't get tired. Don't get tired. Don't get tired. Why? A day is coming. Men will not listen to the gospel. Why the preaching of the gospel with a sense of agency? They are going to turn away their ears from the truth and shall be turned into feeble stories. The agency of the preaching is real since men shall soon choose the slavery path of feebles. People will like pastors, preachers that are going to tell them stories. We need to preach it now. Ellen Y says, and I quote, Evangelism page one, we are in time's closing hours and the Advent message proclaimed to make ready a people prepare for our Lord's return must swell to a loud cry reaching the utmost part of the earth. The gospel is now opposed on every side. Gospel workers page 149. Never was the confederacy of evil stronger than at the present time. Spirit of evil are combining with human agency to war against the commandments of God. Demons this week are going to gather. Principalities are going to gather. Satanic agents are going to gather. In the city or in the community, we are going to preach. We need to understand uh, there must be a call to prayer when the gospel is being preached. Why must we preach the gospel with a sense of agency? Uh, Matthew 24 verse 11 and many false prophets will appear and deceive many people the reason why we need to preach it is a necessity since false prophets and their deceptions are ensnaring and alluring false prophet doing all sorts of miracles, all sorts of signs, all sorts of wonders. I'm not saying it. Jesus says many false prophets are going to arise. How many people are going to be deceived by the prophet? Many. This is the reason we need to preach the gospel. But there is a sad statement I saw in scripture for the sake of time. It breaks my heart personally. I want to read it. One of my motivations to preaching the gospel is to make Jesus smile. I want to make Jesus smile. I want to make God happy. Luke 15. And bring hither the fatted cow and kill it and let us eat and be merry for this my son was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found and he began to make or be merry. I say to you likewise, there will be more joy in heaven over how many sinner? Talk to me, over how many sinner? Over how many sinner? Show me one way to make God excited. Show me one way to change the melodies of heaven. Show me one way to make the angels best forth with gladness. Show me one way to let God smile and be proud of you. He says even one sinner, I want to make a plea to the church. Hear me, it's just two weeks. These two weeks, those of you who have cars, let your cars drive every night. Bring a friend or the other. Every night, just make up your mind. I want to just put a smile on God's face for just these two weeks. I want to bring just one. Imagine every young person here, 
Every young person, every old man, every old woman, every professional, every student, you just make a vow. Dear Lord, since the Bible says there is more joy in heaven over one sinner, and it says, likewise I say to you, there is joy in the presence of angels of God over one sinner that repent. I want to make God happy. I want to make the heavens sing every night. I want to bring one person to Jesus. I want to bring him. I want to bring him. I want to bring him. Can I see your hand if you want us to do this together? Those in the hotel I'm sleeping, I've invited four of them yesterday. And I'm going to invite extra four. Every night, I pick their numbers. I'm going to be checking up on them. When they don't have shadow, I tell them, when you come, I will take care of your transport. When you come, I will take care of you. Transportation will be made available. How many persons this week want to make God smile? Now, Nairobi Central, your hands are down. How many persons here want to make God smile? Every night, I want to attempt by the grace of God. I want to rope in somebody and start bringing them to the venue every night. It's difficult, but I want to do it for Jesus. Let me see your hand. Yo, let me say it differently. One, two, three, four. One, two, three. All right, can you hear me? All the sweating of sweat, this is your response. How many persons want to make God smile? I want to attempt to bring somebody every night. God's will is tough, but I want to do it for Jesus. I want to bring somebody. I want to push them. I want to arrange for them to be at the venue every night and listen to the gospel. Let me see your hand. Hands down. How many persons want to bring their boyfriend? Listen, if you're a Seventh day Adventist young lady and you are dating a guy, and you are finding it difficult to let him accept your faith, this is the time. You tell him, honey, no, nothing else aside this. It's a date. We want to be there every night. I want to make God happy. Number two. How much is 1.7 million Kenya shillings in dollars? Do the math for me. I need money. I sat there. Me, I want to sleep at a place that is clean and neat and I can preach well. Amen? No, you didn't respond well. Amen? So, if the budget is not good and I can't sleep well, my wife is not here already, you know. So, I need good mattress, good ambience. I wrap myself in a mattress as a lonely man. When I wake up, my mind is working. My food is solid. And you, you see the way I'm preaching this? It's not just the Holy Spirit. The place I slept was good. The food was good. So, we need money. I told the evangelism director, we need some two screens. They said it's going to be in the day. I said, we need to hire an LED or we need to hire a screen. We are not reaching out to village people. We need money. So I want to ask, 1.7 million Kenya shillings is how much in dollars? $30,000. One, three. 13. No, that is not your problem. I need not to make an altar call in Nairobi Central. But for the sake of staff, I want to do it. So two things I'm asking today. We want to be present. Number two, we need $13,000 for this campaign not to be disrupted. How many persons want to give some money? It may be $5, $10, $20, $1,000, whatever. We need $13,000. I want to put something for this evangelism uh, uh, campaign. Pastor Mensa. I want to do it for Jesus. I want to make him smile, and I want to do it. Why? The preaching of the gospel is God's best way of saving the lost. Let me see your hand. I want to give some money. Please, I, I'm, not, I'm not joking. Please, I want, to, I want to give some money. Please raise up your hand. Where are the musicians? Come and sing the song for us. Let's sing this song. I'm going to make an altar call. Uh, KKC? Is it K? KBC. We are going to sing this song and we are going to wrap it up for the video. And I'm stepping down to take extra 10, 15 minutes. I want to end this on a better note. And then we pray. And we will return back in the afternoon. We are coming to pray for the power of the Holy Spirit in the afternoon. I'm going to be here to lead it myself. For two hours, we are just going to pray in this place. We will go to that mission. You are going to see something we have never seen in a long time. Why? God wants to finish his work. I want us to sing the song. Do you know how to sing it? 212. It is almost time for the Lord to come. I want to project it from my screen, uh, the camera crew. I want to project that song from my screen. I want us to sing that song. It is almost time for the Lord to come. I hear the, 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 the staff says, and when we are singing that song, I'm going to make two different altar calls. I want you to join me. 
as we make that him 212. Please, let me use my screen for, for a special reason. It is almost time for the Lord to come. Good. We are singing all the stanzas. Lift up your voice. Tis almost time for the Lord to I hear the people say, the people the stars of heaven are growing deep. Jesus is going to come. Growing it must be the breaking of the day. It must be the breaking of the day. Oh, it must be. The signs foretold. The signs foretold. In the moon. In the sun. In the sun. In the sun. In In the In the sky. Nature is crying out to mankind. Jesus is coming again. The coming of the master. Robert Nye. The coming of the master. Robert evangelistic effort just raise up your hand just raise up your hand you are in the auditorium and you want to say I want to by the grace of God show up don't those of you who are here we don't just need your money we need your money and your presence I come free to empty seats the Holy Spirit cannot bring the people from their homes I want to bring people to the field I want to 
use my car two weeks if I'm in town I will sacrifice I will drive I will be there somebody should hear the gospel I just want you to lift up your hand if you are here lift up your hand if you are here lift up your hand I want to be present and I want to bring somebody into that evangelistic meeting just lift up your hand if you are seated yes stand on your feet I want to be present it applies to those who are here as well I want to be present those upstairs you are not going to be present I want to be present and I want to bring somebody just stand on your feet we want to pray I want I'm staying very far God's will I'm staying very far but as much as it depends on me I want to be present and I want to make sure I bring somebody as well let's bow our heads let's pray father in heaven what a gladdened opportunity for the church in Nairobi Central to open a new church to populate the kingdom of heaven. Wow. Bless this church. Bless the leadership. Bless the members. This church serves as an example to many churches across the division, yea, if not the world. We pray that something unique, something wonderful, something special will happen in the next two weeks. Please. We pray that you will cause us not to leave the seats empty, to rope in the lost. We want to give every lost soul within our circle a lifeline. Because we ourselves, we are hooked on your hope. We pray for grace. We pray this week Satan will be at work full time, but he's no match to your power. Silence the work of the enemy. We pray the resources we need. We want to open a church for professionals, a church for, 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 for the working class, a church for those who are not just native, they also from other nations that are here who cannot speak local languages. We want to open an English church. Please, the fountain of hope, Bless this effort. Bless everyone who wants to donate some money for this project. By close of today, may we get in excess of $20,000 plus for this work. It's the least we can do. We pray when the lost are gathered, let your spirit work in a mighty way. Give us favorable weather. Give us accident free event. Help everybody going to participate in all dimensions. And Lord, even as we return in the afternoon, to pray deeper and to study how we will strategize for the spiritual onslaught. May you be with us. May the Lord bless us and keep us. May the God of heaven lift up his face upon us and be gracious to us. And Lord, may you bless everybody who is going to give money. Record it against their name. Everybody going to use their talent and time and body temple. May you reckon it for us righteousness. For we have asked. Jesus' name. Let somebody shout and say an amen. God bless you.